How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and we are back with another preseason FPL video and today we're continuing our Team Watch series. We're nearly at the end there, just a couple teams left to go. And up next is Spurs. A lot of their assets are not being looked at because either they're too expensive or maybe there's newer, shinier toys in FPL. But we'll take a look at all of their attacking options as well as some of the defensive ones and what they're doing in the transfer market to help bolster their squad for this upcoming season. Even done so already, Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it is readily available. Drop us a follow over on Twitter so you can keep up to date with any and all FPL news, and give us a follow over on Twitch so you can join us live for our preview deadline and any impromptu FPL streams, which are only a couple days away, basically. They're It's right around the corner. I'm recording this on the Saturday, the day of the Community Shield. The next stream will be in two days time on the Monday. So make sure to be tuned in for that. We'll leave a pinned comment down below on the last video of the Team Watch series to let you know when our next streams are doing. And we'll do that for all of our videos for the upcoming FPL season. Now, without further ado, let's take a look at Spurs' attacking options. Now, we managed to rack up a lot of FPL points last season if you went with some of the Spurs attackers, and they have a very good run of fixtures to start. Hyunmin Son was somebody who was pretty much underpriced, even though I thought he was going to be a bit too expensive, but now he's seen a price hike, so I wish I could have got him uh, at his lower price from last season, but he's seen that premium price tag now at $12 million. Harry Kane's actually seen a price reduction to match Erling Haaland, and is the highest priced forward in the game, but his numbers are even more ridiculous in preseason than what they were towards the end of last season, and it's just all action everything. And then we also have Dan Kulisevsky, who's another 8 million midfielder that could easily be rotated off the likes of Saka and Mount and those sorts of players. Luis Diaz being another one. And he's going to fit in that role. And I think that he is someone who can pretty much exclusively play on that right-hand side. I think with Richarlison, who is someone we'll talk about in the transfer section, won't hinder him that much. We'll talk about that more when we get into the transfer section. But I think it's going to be Son and Kane. These are the two guys that they link up well. I mean, it seems like every preseason game, they've got a goal and assist each from each other, let alone anything else that they get. If you look at the season stats above me, I mean, 104 big chances across the season, 16 of them were in the last four matches that they played, which is just absolutely crazy. Antonio Conte's got them ticking along quite nicely. They do create a boatload of chances. They're very compact defensively, and they can just, on their day, turn up and beat anyone i mean they beat city twice last season pretty convincingly for the most part and it's down to sonic kane and at the moment i currently have kane in my draft i know a lot of you know fpl managers will be looking at erling holland a similar price and just start with them from the beginning i think kane you know look at the first four fixtures they're pretty darn good southampton at home wolves at home forest away yeah chelsea way could be difficult but they're even in disarray so you might be thinking that's Three and a half good fixtures off the start for Spurs. And do the likes of, you know, Mo Salah and Erling Haaland and El Kevin De Bruyne even. Are they going to compete with these two guys when they have such good fixtures to start? And they've been red hot in preseason as well. Me personally, I'm starting to sway towards them. I've had a couple of drafts where I've had Kane and Son as my two premiums with no Haaland or no Salah. And to be honest, it looks pretty good. And you can always, you know, swap off the one that you want. If you look at, you know, in terms of fixtures as well, captaincy-wise, Spurs and City actually rotate slightly better than Liverpool. And you could still have three Liverpool players. You could still have the likes of Robertson and Trent, who are going to be solid as ever. DS comes in at a lower price as well. And you can go with these Spurs guys. Now, that doesn't mean you're going without Mo Salah, which is obviously a big inherent risk in itself. But I think Son and Kane are definitely being overlooked. I mean, their stats are absolutely ludicrous. I mean, the last four matches they played in the Premier League, Kane had 17 shots inside the box. An XGI of 4.32. Like, he's averaging basically a return every game, which is just crazy to think about. And as a pairing, you're not necessarily having to captain these guys, even though captaining one of them is probably the best thing you can do with their price point in order to get the most value out of them. I just think Spurs are being overlooked. I think they're too good not to go with at least something from Spurs off the start. Even maybe one of the fullbacks, which we'll talk about in a bit. I think Son and Kane are too good not to start with, potentially. So, wait and see. 
They also have a game today that hasn't been played yet versus Roma. We'll see how they are in that. Maybe, you know, there's some, uh, you know, more highlights of them just doing miraculous things that sways us more into the Spurs bandwagon. So, again, I'm going to keep my eyes closely on that. But let's talk about some of the defensive options that Spurs had from last season and how that might change for this season. Now, Hugo Lloris is one of the goalkeepers that actually didn't see a price drop from last season. I think he came into 5.5 million last season and is considered one of the premium goalkeepers, which is a bit unfortunate. I think it would probably be better if he was at 5 million and maybe more of an option, but I think he's still good at that price point. And I think Spurs do have a lot of good defensive options that could be rotation risks, but look to be quite good. Ryan Sessegnon was someone who was playing in that left wing back role, was creating a boatload of chances, as you can see by his XGI in the last four matches played in the Premier League from last season. 2.12 is very, very impressive, although they have brought in a new left wing back. We'll talk about him when we get to the transfer section. You probably know who that is already. But Matt Doherty is someone who doesn't really have a backup. Jed Spence was talked about by Antonio Conte as someone who is a future basic investment and it looks like Doherty could be the mainstay there and the five million could be very very good if you're going to go with these you know two premiums uh in Son, Kane, De Bruyne, Holland, Salah, whoever it may be and you're going with an eight million midfielder or you're going heavy at the back and Jesus up front these sorts of five million defenders are going to be quite good and I think Doherty could provide excellent value I mean his first two home fixtures versus Southampton and Wolves they're two teams that are somewhat in transition, don't really score too many goals, and they also play a promotional team in the first four game weeks, and I think Doherty could be one of those guys that excels like he did before his injury at the end of last season. So, want to watch on him. If he just becomes nailed and there's no real player to kind of displace him, Doherty could be in all of our teams in order to get some way into the Spurs kind of attack, as it were, even though he is a defender. Sessegnon is if he I mean if he's going to play week in week out at 4.5 million then he's going to be fantastic value and would be a good budget defender although some signings have may have changed that defensively what do I think Spurs clean sheet hopes are I think they're actually pretty good especially in the opening four game weeks across the whole season they're probably going to finish around anywhere from like fourth to sixth probably in the clean sheet category maybe they'll creep up to third you'll probably expect City and Liverpool to keep the most clean sheets Chelsea if they get their act together should keep a lot of clean sheets as well and I think Spurs could be up there I think Antonio Conte prides himself off compactness hitting teams on the break being very kind of creative and directive in attack directive's not even a word but we'll go with it anyway that just shows how good Antonio Conte's teams have been. And it's mainly due to the wingbacks. And if one emerges as the kind of sole provider of basically everything, they're going to be in almost every manager's team. So one to keep an eye on there. Now, we've talked about it enough. Let's see if we can pinpoint what transfer Spurs have made that could impact our FPL teams this coming season. Now, having made it into the Champions League, Spurs are now able to bolster their squad to a point where they have significant backups in behind their main starting 11, something that they haven't been able to do over the past few seasons. And with a signing like Richarlison, it's a big statement. You can have somebody like him come off the bench and be a replacement for pretty much any one of the front three. Me personally, though, I think it doesn't limit Kulisevsky's option as an 8 million midfielder, I think it's more of a Son slash Kane backup, as it were, because Richarlison has played through the middle for the likes of Everton, his former club, and often plays on the left-hand side, typically when he was playing week in, week out, and they had Calvert-Lewin fit and available, so he is able to do both of those things. I think they also have other options, like Lucas Moore, who could play on the right-hand side, who would come in for Kulisevsky. I think with five substitutions, the likelihood is that Son and potentially Kane will see more earlier substitutions as the season progresses, or in and around European ties. Also, with the likes of Yves Basuma, who's come in in central midfield, he's probably going to hold down the fort with either Bentecourt or Hoybjerg in most games. Again, more depth in the defensive midfield role for Spurs, and it's a quite a crucial and important role for Antonio Conte's system to kind of function in that midfield, as they need ball players and ball winners who can do that job and basically get it to the dangerous front three and allow the wingbacks to overlap and underlap and do all kinds of crazy stuff on the counter-attack. And then speaking of signings, Ivan Perisic, formerly of Inter Milan, 
Croatian international has been signed on a free, a long-standing member of Antonio Conte's kind of dream team, as it were, under his regime at Inter Milan, who has come in at 5.5 million in FPL and could be the long-standing left wing back, which will basically replace both Reguilon and Sessegnon in the starting role. He is very, very happy when it gets when he gets in front of goal in terms of shooting and will score quite a few goals I think potentially this season if he is fit and gets the minutes to do so. I do think however that with Spurs you know it's a kind of a double-edged sword they can be very attacking but it also means that they have to do a lot of work defensively getting up and down the pitch which could also see them getting substituted pre-60 minutes so one to keep an eye on. In terms of the outs, Steven Bergwijn has returned back to Ajax just under £27 million and was kind of more of a bit part player and probably wouldn't have seen much game time in our FPL teams anyway, but all the best to him at Ajax. Uh, Joe Rodon is someone who is being linked away from the club as well. Again, a very bit part center back. They brought in uh, Longley as well uh, on loan from Barcelona. They also still have Ben Davies, who's played in the back three. They have Davinson Sanchez. They have uh, Romero as well. Uh, Eric Dyer, who was fantastic last season. They have a lot of center backs who potentially uh, could play in that role. So Joe Ronan will probably likely see a low move, potential option to buy. And same for Jaffa Tanganga. He's also being looked at by uh, some Italian clubs as well. I think AC Milan is looking uh, in and around him as well. He could potentially see a move to Serie A, whether it be on loan or a potential permanent deal. But I think that Spurs overall have strengthened quite well. Uh, Jed Spence is another one that they've they've added to their books as well. Fraser Forster, as we mentioned in the previous video for Southampton, they lo are looking really really solid as a just kind of just squad and team and first eleven. Everything looks really really good. So. I'm Really, really excited to see what they have to offer this season. Could they be the team that knocks on the door and basically dethrones either Liverpool or Man City in terms of like a, as a threat to the title race? We'll have to wait and see. They are Spurs after all, and sometimes they do collapse. Like in the season when uh, Leicester won the league, they should have probably won it themselves under Mauricio Pochettino, but didn't do so. But with Antonio Conte, a serial winner, someone who's won the Premier League before, we could see things change at Whiteheart Lane. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. How successful has Spurs' transfer window been this season? And do you think they need any more additions for the summer? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Scout members area, the one place that you need to be tuned into for the upcoming FPL season. It has a wide variety of resources and tools that will help improve your FPL game today. It has a bunch of different members-only articles written by some of the best FPL managers across the globe heat maps for all the players and positions as well as player comparison tools which will help you see side by side who is going to be more effective for your fpl team fully customizable stats tables powered by optostats and much much more use the link down in the description below so that you can get access to the fantasy football scout members area today it'll help improve your fpl game this video has been sponsored by Manscaped, the best in male below the waist grooming. Make sure to check out manscaped.com so you can see the latest and greatest updates to their lawnmower as well as their performance package and much, much more for all their gadgets and gizmos to help keep your family jewels looking as shiny as ever. Make sure to use the code FLAME20 so that you can get 20% off your next Manscaped order as well as free worldwide shipping. Go check out Manscaped.com today. And that is going to do it for this Tottenham edition of the preseason team watch. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe channel if you are new, and turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it's readily available. Drop us a follow over on Twitter so that you can keep up to date with any and all FPL news, as well as give us a follow over on Twitch so you can join us live for our preview deadline and any impromptu FPL streams. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, we will be doing our streams back again over exclusively on Twitch. And the first one's only in a couple days time. That's going to be the preview stream on Monday. I'm recording this on Saturday, the day of the Community Shield. So in a couple days time, we'll be having the FPL streams back up and running. And I'm super excited for it as well. And lastly, make sure to check the link down in the description below for Fantasy Football Scouts members area. All the stats you saw on today's video are from the Fantasy Football Scout members area from the custom tables that are public to any members in the Fantasy Football Scout members area. 
it's going to help elevate your FPL game. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, take care.